Thank you. Um, so I'll just um, explain a little bit of the process, how we made the film and everything. Um, it also took us eight years to make the film. Uh, five years to raise the money, mostly, at least the beginning, uh, the first part of the money, and to, to write the script and all. It, it is my very first animated film, so I have a background as a producer, screenwriter, and also I directed another feature film. As a producer, I, I produced uh, six features. Uh, I, was, I was thinking while Alexandre was uh, speaking, that there should be always a, a transparent relationship between the author and the producer. I'm both, and I'm not very sure if I had a very transparent relationship between my role as a producer and as an author. It's sometimes difficult because you have to keep controlling yourself, but uh, in the end, I think it worked well. But I did hire other um, people. I'll show some of the key members of the crew. I don't know if you watch the film, uh, or if I should play a teaser. How many of you watch the film? Nobody. So I'll show the, te the teaser. Um, so it started, uh, when it started I had no idea of what animation was like, except as a, I don't know, somebody who watched animations. So, but I had the idea that I wanted to do, I've, my background with the other films, I, I always, only produce like a very political and engaged films for adults. And I had this idea of a story about a kid who had to save the world from a fear disease. And I thought um, it was a very important subject to discuss with kids. I had, uh, my kids were very small when, uh, when I started, uh, when I had the, the first idea. Uh, actually, my second kid wasn't born yet. So he's eight now. Um, so it came to me that it would be like a good idea to make an animated feature for two uh, main reasons. One was that it would be um, easier to communicate and to talk to kids about this uh, adult subject uh, through animation. And also there, is, uh, there was this challenge as a producer uh, from Brazil to try to make something that uh, was more international because it's very difficult for a Brazilian movie, and I had produced already like five features, 
with uh, uh, some discrete success, like in, in important festivals, we won awards in Venice, uh, Tribeca, Locarno, New York. Uh, but it's, it's very difficult to distribute uh, a feature film from Brazil, uh, and still is. So I thought it could be a good idea also to make an animation as a producer, uh, because you can dub the films. And uh, this, um, I thought, could be make it easier for the film to be distributed. Um, I guess it somehow worked, as Igor was saying. It was uh, the film was uh, it was the widest uh, release that I had, uh, if I compare to the other films that I have produced. So this is how it started. But the funny story is that. Uh, as I said, I had no idea of how to make an animation. So when I first raised the first investment for the film in Brazil, uh, I said, wow, now it's real. Because uh, until you don't have like at least some kind of investment, the film is just an idea, right? So then I turned to, to my friends who had already worked in animation. And I said, OK, now what do I do? And they said to me, go to Annecy, uh, the festival. And I think it was the, the, the best advice that I had. Uh, because there I started to meet anyone who would be willing to meet me. And I found out that uh, the animators crowd is quite different from live action crowd. Live action, like, that's not a general rule, but on average, they, everyone is more like, ah, you know, don't touch me kind of thing. Whereas uh, with uh, animators and people from animation, everybody was really willing to sit down with me and discuss things and say what could work, what could not work. And it was really, really super helpful. And uh, Anissi was very helpful in so many ways because uh, the first time I went there, I just had this idea and a little bit of money. I had a script that back then was 120 pages long. And uh, the final version was like 60-something uh, pages. So we rewrote the script so many times because um, I seriously didn't know how to make an animated feature. And then uh, we were uh, selected to the MIFA pitches. And then afterwards, we were selected to the work in progress. And then we were selected to the competition and the festival. And then we were selected to Annecy, or before that, to Annecy goes to Cannes. And um, after the, the competition in Annecy, we were selected to uh, Animation is Film, which is a cooperation between G Kids and Annecy Festival. So um, even though it's not an international co production, we didn't manage to co produce with uh, um, an European or another, like a co production company for another country. It was really, really important to have this contact with with the international producers and international authors. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to to make the film. Um, we did an uh, answering like um, uh, Igor's comment. Um, we did sign some uh, co-production deals, but uh, we managed to find money in Brazil before we could find it elsewhere. And uh, so that's why it ended up being like 99% uh, Brazilian. There is a little bit of money from Ibermedia, which is like a, a fund for Ibero-American countries. And we had a very, very small co-production with Mexico in order to make that happen. Just to name, and uh, again, as I'm not an animator, I cannot draw anything whatsoever. If you ask me to draw like an X, I'm not able to do it. Uh, I had to rely on the talent of, of so many people. And that was a beautiful challenge because I had to trust people and I had to, to be taken by them, by their hands, and see what they could do. Uh, the first two people that I talked to were Gabriel Bitar and Andrea Catoto. Uh, back at the beginning of the project, I used to run a short films festival, and they were like this very independent short film uh, 
animators, and uh, they won like I don't know three different awards throughout like two years of the existence of the festival, and they had like really strange looking films. So I said, oh, uh, these guys could work for the idea. So they were the first two to come on board. Um, and then the first time I've been to, to Annecy, I met Daniel Greco um, there in Annecy. He's Brazilian, but I met him there, and he was there with the first, uh, he was the, the coordinator and supervisor for the first uh, animated, Brazilian animated feature that uh, was selected to the competition in Annecy, which is uh, 2096, A Story of Love and Fury, which ended up winning and see. So it was a film that was very important for, Bra for Brazil and animation in general in Brazil because it opened up the possibility, like uh, people started looking at Brazil as a country that could uh, produce uh, quality animation. And uh, I met him there just like hours before they won the award and he ended up being like the executive producer of the film and this, is, this was super important because um, having made uh, the, the first feature, animated feature, with an international uh, 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 presence, uh, he went through all the problems that could happen in, in the production process. So that was really, really valuable for uh, our film. Um, and also other people, Filippi Sabino, he's uh, like uh, his uh, business associate in a company uh, that is basically consultancy for for uh, animated films. Paulo Torino was a guy that we, we discovered in the studio because we hired a studio, which is Split Studio, um, that uh, it, it, Tito and the Birds was their first feature film, but they've been doing like series for a long time, TV series, animated TV series in, in Sao Paulo. And uh, Paolo Torino, he ended up being uh, the art director of the film and he was discovered by the studio. And the studio was really important. Before we came to the studio, we, we did some development by, by our own. So we had a Bible, we had all the do's and don'ts. But the, the, the structure of the studio was very important to, to give a, a, an upgrade in the process of, of the production of the film. Uh, and then uh, I'd like to point out also Gustavo Kulot and Binho Pfeffer, the, the, they were responsible for the original soundtrack, and uh, they had already uh, made the soundtrack for Boy and the World, which was the, the, the very successful Brazilian film that was also in Anissi, and then went on to be selected for an Oscar. Um, oh, this is still upside down. Uh, I'll show you a uh, small video of um, the making of, of the film, and then I'll discuss some other aspects of the production. of the film are the result of the integration of nano painting, digital drawings, and 
graphic animation. Of course the characters had to match the chosen aesthetics of the film. Some of the top talents in Brazil, and we gave the acting a very materialistic tone. Having the sonority of the film available during the development process was very important to the film. Uh, this was something that uh, did create some problems for us. Um, the idea that we have a very art house um, film in terms of looks and uh, a very traditional or almost completely traditional script. Because the film is an adventure, traditional adventure. And uh, we chose to do it this way because it's already a very heavy story in terms of like, um, because we were aiming at audiences starting at six years old and above. So I thought that it would be much more efficient uh, to, to um, create awareness about the, 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 the main topic of the, of the film, which is fear, but not any kind of fear. It's really the fear that we are living nowadays brought by you know, the internet, the news, outlets and, 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 and by Donald Trump and by Bolsonaro and by all these people and by all these situations that we are creating in the world. So an adventure what would be like a fun way to, to engage in, 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 this, uh, in this story and uh, to try to understand what it is all about. The whole idea of the film is to, to, to make kids and adults understand the, the, the how fear can be used for manipulation and, and to create a, a, a system um, somehow that is dominating us and to point out some w ways out. Um, but there was a lot of resistance, especially by, by the French 
and they would say, um, this is too American. And of course the Americans would say, no, this is too French. So it was in between. And it was really, really satisfying when uh, the film was selected to Toronto. And it did pretty well in, in Annecy. But again, there was this resistance because, oh, it's, it's an adventure in the end of the day. But in Toronto, I could see that the adventure, um, the, the, the choice of making it an adventure really worked because even though the visuals are quite, quite um, unique, there is an adventure there and the kids are very engaged with the film. So just to show a little bit of the aspects of the visual development of the film, um, of course it started very differently. <laughs> so you can see there was the very, very initial uh, concept for Tito, um, very dark, um, it, it kept being that, but we progressively went to more like humanoid forms. Um, so then we had this, this concept here that what was a little bit childish and also the heads were too big, especially for a big screen. So it would be very difficult to, to frame the characters. Then they became more human-like, but still not quite there. And then at the same time, the, we, the, the backgrounds were evolving a lot until we got to a point where we had a very interesting idea that I'll show in a second. So the last one there is the final uh, concept of Tito. So one very important thing in the visual development was um, that we decided, it's a simple thing, but it changed a lot, that we wouldn't have like any kind of straight lines. We would have like all this deformity because of two different things. Uh, first, the big idea that we had was that we would use um, expressionism as a big reference for the aesthetics of the film because uh, we had a big challenge we were uh, making a film for small kids about fear. Uh, so it couldn't be too frightening. Otherwise, kids would just walk out of the movie theaters and it wouldn't work. But it couldn't be too light. Otherwise, if, if the kids didn't feel any kind of fear, it wouldn't work. So the idea of expressionism as this dense aesthetics distorted was, was crucial for us to to be able to, to show and make kids feel the fear without being too frightening. And this idea of not having straight lines was when, for the characters, was when we managed to integrate characters and backgrounds because the backgrounds are very intense. So if you had the, like all straight lines, we couldn't, we, we couldn't integrate the characters there. So some poses for the characters. One big challenge was how we go from zero to six. It took, took us quite some time to, to make a, that progression because the characters, they get sick with the, the disease and they eventually turn into rocks, like egg-shaped rocks. And uh, so it, this was a challenge too. And then you already start to see the backgrounds already inspired by expressionism and the integration with the characters. There was a, it was, the colors were very important for us too. We had like a, a, a key frame script that would translate, um, would relate how emotions in the script um, would translate into different colors. So, and the same thing with the distortion of of, um, of the backgrounds. So the more fear there was in the scene, more distorted and more dense uh, the colors were. We had to, we were, we used a, mi a mix of, um, we used a very simple technique for the animation, which is Toon Boon, which is, you guys probably know it, uh, but we did it in a way that uh, would allow animators to make a lot of hand draw 
draws uh, when there were action scenes. And uh, the idea of not having very straight lines was very helpful uh, in that case too. Uh, here I'll show a bit of an animatic together with um, the, the, not the very final result of the scene, but um, almost the final result. Wait. Just a second, I think there is... Ah, it's one after the other, okay.
So we, we had, as I said, uh, mixed techniques. We, we um, had Toon Boon and then we had uh, Photoshop for the backgrounds, but again, as our reference was expressionism, especially oil paint, uh, German expressionism in painting, we, what we did was that we photographed lots of uh, uh, strokes with actual oil paint into Photoshop and use them as textures to, to, to emulate um, the look and feel of, of oil paint. And then uh, we had uh, also everything planned so that during compositing we would actually add frame by frame oil paint, especially like in, in, in the special effects like smoke, uh, water, or textures, sometimes like uh, um, extras in the background or cars driving by. So we developed like a, a system to, to know what would be made in each department during the planning. Um, so we have like the digital painting, the effects, digital effects, then oil paint animation, and then oil paint also for, for the, the lights, shadows, and the atmosphere, and then we integrate them all. In one, in one scene. Just uh, to show a, a bit of uh, disintegration. Oops. Of the the special effects in compositing. Um, 
this was um, one of the main inspirations for us in terms of um, um, uh, the expressionism and also for specific scenes that we use where we spin the camera a lot to create like um, our kind of special effects and transitions in between scenes. So here are some backgrounds that we use. For instance, this is the background for the opening credits. So we, we move the camera around and spin them, the camera throughout the, the, the background. The same thing um, on the other side. And also here are some examples of, of backgrounds that uh, we move the camera a lot in them. Some of them had to be really big because we had to move everything. And here, just an example. This, um, all these scenes that I'm showing are without like sound post-production and image post-production, so they are, re are a, a bit rough. It hurts to watch them now, but okay. In terms of production, this is, uh, I said it took us eight years, but five years, as I said, to raise the money, write the script, find the people to help me. And this is the actual production. We, it took us like three years of actual production once we started. So this is more or less uh, the timeline. And um, in the last line on the bottom, you can see the average crew size, uh, like the average number of people at the same time, working at the same time. It doesn't mean that they are the same people. So this is our budget. Um, if it would translate our currency into euros nowadays, it would be much less than that, but it was 1.3 million euros, more or less, give or take. And uh, that's pretty much what I had to show. I don't know if you have any questions. Some applause. Thank you. Actually, it's like okay. You, you keep keep the image on on the budget because, like, uh, I think it's really not uh, not a big one for proportions and uh, work and uh, um, crew that that we are talking. Even according to the budget, also like the figures of the crew working on the film, it was really interesting to understand how many people. Not so many, as it is usual. I don't know with a with a friend. No, all in all, we had like 130 people working, but uh, that was like. Uh, to show the peak of people working at the same time. It's also because we started the film without having all the money, as I usually do, and we hoped for the best. It was very risky because with animation, if you have to stop the production, then it's incredibly expensive to start again because you have to put the crew together again. And uh, we, we didn't stop, so we were, we had a plan, but it could have failed and it didn't. So it was a good thing. 
You mentioned before uh, Ale Abreu, or actually you mentioned he's uh, the composer that worked on both uh, mm -hmm. Gustavo Pfeiffer. Uh, was it when uh, the Omininum Mundu came out in 2016, 2017, 2015 maybe, 2015? Yes, I think it was either 2015 or 2016. So, I mean, it's not the same story, but it's very related uh, somehow, I would say. For you, when you saw Omenino, uh, did you had like some some fear that maybe you know um, Tito and the birds will be kind of like the people people will say, oh, it's just like you try to do this Brazilian new movement now and you copy uh, in a way, you know, I'm not saying you are copying the what Ale made, but in a way, in a direction, it's kind of like similar, talking about uh, you know violence and society and and. Uh, you know, uh, also relation between uh, father and, and son, you know, intergenerational, um, how to say, like uh, problems or coexistence, uh, fascism in the back of the, of the story, not so much direct in, 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 in the face with maybe with it on the birds, but yeah, maybe even more direct because you show media as well and the uh, way how the media are controlling the... So th was there yeah, any... Yeah, there any... are similar themes, but... Uh... I, I think they're so different in so many ways that uh, like visually and also the way the story is developed. Uh, I don't think uh, The Boy in the World is like, it is a journey, but it's not an adventure. It does not have like sci-fi and I don't know. I think they are quite different. No, I don't think. And I, it's actually cool when, when uh, uh, I, and nobody did relate the film's that much because they're really they look really different and they're developed very differently. But uh, I think it's it's uh, I'll be proud to be related to something that is coming out of Brazil. So I don't. I... Uh, you didn't mention, or maybe I just sneaked out. Uh, the entire production and the pipeline was made in Sao Paulo, in your city, or you moved? No. No, everything was made in 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 Sao Paulo. Yes, it was. We, we did, uh, once we had, once I said, okay, let's start it, uh, we had like s six months of uh, development and um, we did it alone without the studio, but I was already negotiating with the studio. Then uh, we did uh, the pre-production in the studio and the studio handled the uh, animation backgrounds um, and then we did the uh, compositing alone. We put together the, the, a crew for the compositing department because one of the co-directors, Gabriel Bittar, he was in charge of the compositing. He was the one that shows up like painting with oil paint in, in the video. And uh, we knew that we were going to use his talents to complete the film and we planned ahead so that we could use a lot of that to add a lot of uh, production value to, to, to the film in the end. With the animated feature that is done for the first time, uh, I know stories that uh, uh, putting up the pipeline, getting like a crew together, which can already like be a little problem because if there are not enough skilled animators for the work you wanna, you you have in mind, uh, it's already hard to bring them together. But then, like when they start, like some of them, they prove they are not capable to to follow the the levels of quality or whatever. You had problems like this, or you were lucky that you have a crew of in betweeners animators and everybody else that were working uh, good. Uh, we did have that problem, but uh, how do I put it? It was not my problem. It was the studio's problem. Of course, in the, at the end of the day, it was my problem too, but uh, at, at the beginning, because of the tight budget, the studio tried to, to hire a lot of freelancers, and that did not work very well. Uh, it did work a bit, but at the, uh, there was a point where you see, like, if you see the production part, you see that we start with 20, this was mostly like freelancers, then when we reached 40, we put them all together most of them, like 80% of them were together in, in the studio, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to, under the supervision of the animation director, Chico Bella, um, otherwise uh, we would have not finished the, the, the film. Because there was, there was this good thing also uh, in, in the studio, because 
um, the animators wanted to be because there were different crews. They were like uh, doing TV series and all, but everybody aspired to be part of the, the feature film crew because they had more time to show their talent to do a better job per second. So th that was a good environment to, to, to bring talent to, to the project. So um, You showed us also like a piece that it seems important uh, to you and it's like uh, sound design and actually actors um, like uh, acting. So, so voice, mm -hmm. voice acting for animation. I, I get the slight impression that they were a little bit really over acting. So, but I think that this is what you wanted because, like, you wanted them with their voices as well to make uh, the the effect of frightening of. Because, like, it seems like they are they are uh, um, at least what you, what you showed us, and then like in the film maybe it's then. Um, mild it somehow with sound design overall, but this performance, you wanted them to act like this? like No, big? I think um, f uh, maybe they're Brazilians, so they do a lot of, you know? <laughs> um, and, but the, the tone of, of, of the voices in the film is very naturalistic, it's not like uh, except for the villain, the villain is a bit uh, over the top, but uh, as much as all the real the characters that he's representing because the the character of the villain was inspired in uh, people like uh, Trump and uh, Rupert Murdoch and there is this guy in Brazil called Datena who's a, a TV presenter and they are all a little you know uh, dramatic uh, dramatic yeah. because they're all doing that and it's funny because the inspiration in Trump uh, was something that was like a, a real reference for us and that was before he was a candidate uh, for the presidency so it was uh, kind of interesting how it happened. Actually, it's, you know, in many ways uh, you made it as a prediction uh, of bad Unfortunately, things. yes. But uh, fortunately for you, you just made it uh, before there was this huge change in your, in your country because like nowadays you could not make a film like this in Brazil, right? No, there is no money anymore. But also it means, okay, it was screened. Do you know if, if there are campaigns uh, at home in Brazil uh, like in, in order to be screened at schools that still continue even after the theoretical release? No, it's still being screened. Um, there is like programs for schools and, and everything. So you asked me yesterday if I, 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 try, to be not, I try not to be very vocal about the, the, the connection with politics because I, I didn't want to be more important than the film. And I wanted the film to talk by itself. And also, I think there is a problem if you politicize too much, especially a film for kids, because then I'll probably lose the most important audience, which is the other side, uh, those that uh, support the, the populist politicians and those that spread fear. So, yeah, but it's still going on. It's on, on TV, like pay TV in Brazil and in, in the, the streaming platforms. So, What about press critics? You got some, you were eager to um, understand what, how the press will react, so were, were, there, were they writing about it and were they taking the, the subject to a maybe polit more political level? Yes, yeah, some did uh, in Brazil, uh, but uh, I think on average we had more political reveals outside than in Brazil, but some did. Um, generally speaking, the reviews were very positive and uh, some of them were very engaged in the whole political aspect. But it, it's, it's, um, it's really, again, um, it is a political film, as any film is political, even Marvel films, especially Marvel films. Um, but it is an adventure and it's a fun story, so there is this side and it's, it's from my point of view, beautifully made, so. Anybody wants to uh, ask a specific question, Nikola Majdak? Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you for a lovely presentation for uh, us. Thank you. Uh, very detailed. Uh, I was asking uh, uh, two things. Uh, first, Mifa, you've been on the development or looking for financing? I was, I was... I didn't catch, maybe you lost... The, the, 
MIFA, uh, you, you, you have to be there when the, the project is already somehow in development, but I was looking for, for money, yes. Uh -huh. Our co-production. And how does it go? Because uh, yeah, you have 99%, you said, Brazilian money, so there was no uh, any kind of involvement of, of any producers for around the world for such an interesting film. And this, I uh, will all say freely, this bullshit about, you know, is it this action or no? Kids like action, you know, if it's American or European thing. I mean, I don't like when, when somebody told you, you know, that you are mixing something which, you know, kids like. So how do you deal with that kind of uh, things? And how do you find yourself, you know, not finding uh, the producer in uh, ANSI, which, which is the best and biggest festival and uh, all the money and this, how you are approaching to people and getting that kind of uh, interesting uh, answers. Well, uh, my take on it is um, international co-productions are good if you really need them because it's really complicated to, to produce something in different countries. Um, and what happened is that I was lucky enough to have to, to catch my own country in a phase where I could find the whole money there. Uh, being able to find the whole money there was um, probably easier. Not having to divide the, to split the production in, in, into different countries. We were prepared to, to split the production uh, with another studio, but then we found money in Brazil and I said, okay, also, there is something that is quite complicated for co-productions, for us, is, be, is that we are much cheaper than Europe. Uh, nowadays, probably, we are like five or six times cheaper. And uh, the co-production agreement, and I tried very hard to, to work on that side, and nobody agreed with that. And I think it's totally unfair, because the division in the proportion of the ownership of the project is based on how much money you put in. So if somebody puts 1 million euro, euros in, in, in Europe, that is probably equivalent to, I don't know, 300,000 euros in Brazil. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. But still, uh, the division is going to be according to how much money you put in the project. And that's, 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 a com that's tricky. But nowadays we are living something different. Uh, that film would most likely not, it's very difficult to understand what is going on in Brazil right now, even for me. Uh, right now there is no money whatsoever at this point. There might be some money, I don't know, in a few months, hopefully. We are working on that. We, I mean, um, producers and movie makers in general. So right now, if I am to do a new project, I'll most definitely need international producers because I'll need them, right? So w will you? Will you do a new project? You have, I mean, this um, how to say like experience was good for you that you still you think again to make an animated feature? Yes, uh, I loved it. I I don't particular I don't particularly like uh, the 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 set the shooting in live action, I actually hate it because everybody goes crazy and it's very nervous. Waiting, I prefer waiting, the nine waiting. to five job in animation. But also like waiting, 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 you no, know, for to shoot a fiction film. It's a lot of waiting, waiting, waiting and no? Well, in any film, I think it's a lot of waiting. <laughs> it takes a lot, it's a lot of money, a lot of people, a lot of everything. So yes, I'm developing a new project, but uh, it's kind of a schizophrenic because I don't know if it's if there is going to be money ever again in my country, so I don't know. And it's very difficult as a producer to to be part of a project, uh, to, to have a project, if you don't have any money from your country. It's almost impossible. Okay, so maybe a chance for one or two more. So as, as, as we said, uh, the film will be, will be screened tomorrow again at Slovenian Cinematheque. At Six, if I'm not four, wrong, I think. four o'clock. So if you're here, just really check it because it's uh, it's, um, yeah, dif it's different. It's different. It's um, it's important. It's open 
Yesterday we, we've been talking because we had this uh, mixed uh, audience in the beside the Brazilian embassy people. The whole embassy came. Yes, That's very important. <laughs> But there were like kids and parents, and actually this is uh, what you said yesterday in the presentation there, that the film was made also to provoke discussion between, uh, between in, in, inside the family about heavy topics, as in your case, uh, it's fear, but then also it could be death, it could be uh, many, many topics. So you, you think you achieved the, the goal? I, you, don't, you cannot know, because like the film goes, and it goes by, by itself, but... Uh, Yes, I think so far, yes. The, the, the whole idea of, of creating a space for, for parents and children to, to communicate about complicated issues, I think it's, it's working from the feedback that mm -hmm. I've been getting. Yes. Maybe just you know, to know, okay, Hollywood we know that they are uh, making more money than with, uh, with uh, toys and with, uh, with in, in the promotion of the film afterwards, so more than the film, like they are selling characters as toys or you did anything with, for the promotion uh, in terms of like, I don't know, like exhibitions or uh, campaign with postcards or wh whatever, like did you have any special campaign? No, uh, we didn't sell any characters because you need a, a lot of a mass uh, enterprise in order to do that, but uh, we did a lot of uh, online campaigning and uh, we did some cool stuff like, uh, you know, the, the, the guys dressed in, in green that uh, shoot smoke. We built them for real and we put them on the, the busiest avenue in Sao Paulo and uh, it created a lot of buzz because they would shoot like uh, smoke, it was kind of scary. And, uh, but uh, we put some uh, people with balloons on the side after the first time because the kids w were running away from <laughs> the scary guys. I said, oh, maybe some balloons. Then they realized, oh, okay, it's not too bad. You get a balloon, which is, yeah. But uh, that worked. Uh, but again, it's, I was, as I was mentioning to, to people here, it's, um, it's really a really tough uh, market for indie films nowadays for any kind of uh, indie films. And uh, not only in Brazil, but uh, also I heard like in France, the numbers are pretty down from what they used to be. I think uh, the whole Netflix and uh, VOD thing is, is happening and uh, we have to deal with that. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I, I, the last question, but very last, because Lorenzo Matotti is already here and we have to give him floor, please. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, all right, so on. Uh, I wanted to ask, maybe you already um, said it, because you, you've been really precise, you said quite a lot of things, but um, <laughs> you're not, you know, um, like a visual artist, you said, but the movie is, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really beautiful, and I uh, didn't understand, you know, how, how did you find, you know, the people who made um, this, like, great, <laughs> visual thing and uh, yeah I mean how how did you find them I mean, the first two I found uh, they were short filmmakers uh, and they ended up signing the, the direction of, of the co-direction of the film I saw that they had very strange visuals and I thought it could work very well with uh, with the film uh, especially Gabriel Bitar who, who does all this uh, he has a very uh, he's a very talented, uh, uh, how do you say that, post-production and compositing artist. Um, but there were many people who were selected amongst, I was, again, very lucky to be able to access like the top talents in, in Brazil. So we selected some very uh, important artists. Vinnie Wolf, for instance, he's like really, really, really super good. And he's been uh, helping a lot of, of different directors uh, with um, the, the visuals for TV series. And uh, he also helped us quite a lot during the development. And uh, yeah, we just found people. <laughs> It's so, a pity. And it's, the studio helped a lot with that. It's a pity you didn't know Alexandre Siqueira at that time because maybe yeah. uh, you, could, you could use his knowledge. But, <laughs> yeah. but at that time he was too, too young maybe and not experienced <laughs> enough. Gustavo Steimer, thank you very much. Thank for, you, for thank his. you. Thanks. And we, we,